Dune Grow Investors, bonjour, this is Mike Yeru, founder of Dune Stocks Rocks and Passionate Investor. Today, I'm here to help you invest with conviction so you can enjoy your retirement. Following on last week's video about my top three Canadian REITs, here we go today with my top three US REITs. Well, obviously, I could have told you a little bit more about data center or cell towers, but they're pretty much all over the place now, and I'm pretty sure that you know already about them, and most importantly, they don't offer such a high yield. Um, as it was the same case with my Canadian video, I will not discuss retail uh, properties, uh, REITs. Most reason is, they're dying. So uh, back in 2019, I wasn't um, very uh, interested in investing in companies like Mace Rich or uh, Simon Properties Group or Tanger Outlet and, and pretty much told my members, you know what, there's not much to get out of those. So you might want to consider other type of REITs. And this is what I am talking about today. So we're going to look at apartment REITs and industrial REITs. Rates. And the first one is quite interesting because it's getting a little bit out of the extraordinary and we're talking about Innovative Industrial Properties, ticker IIPR. Um, yield is quite decent at 3.65. Dividend growth since 2019, uh, 17, sorry. So quite a new um, rate here uh, on the roll and you'll see that it's growing very fast right now. But most importantly, what does it do? Well, this company has now 61 properties and they're renting facilities for the medical aspect of cannabis production. So all the, the marijuana that is produced not for recreational purposes, but for medicinal purposes in licensed states in the US, while Innovative Properties is their men. Uh, they uh, built those facilities especially for them. So they're all high tech, uh, very concentrated in terms of, um, of states because they're just going with uh, licensed uh, companies and they are fully rented right now. You know that this industry is growing very fast these days and they're growing a lot through acquisitions, obviously. Uh, in terms of geographic uh, diversification, we're counting most of them uh, in the eastern part uh, near Quebec, actually in Ontario. I don't know if there's a link between Canada here and the, uh, and the US and a lot of them in California as well on the other side. Uh, now, their main growth vector is pretty much about the fact that medical marijuana is being used for so many different things. We're talking about uh, disease. Uh, we're talking about helping people to go through pain and, and this is a booming area. So obviously the only thing that they have to do right now is to build new properties, get those new tenants in there and then just keep going rinse and repeat. And it's pretty much what they have been doing since they went on IPO on, in 2017. Uh, when you look at their dividend perspective, it is quite interesting because on this, uh, at the same time, you're getting a 3.5 yield, which is, I know, not incredible in terms of REIT, but still it's pretty decent. But when you think about how the dividend grew um, from 15 cents uh, three years ago to a dollar and 17 cents uh, in 2020, that's pretty solid. Even better than that, dividend payout ratio is roughly always between 75 to 85% of adjusted fund from operation. So you can count on an increasing dividend as long as they are able to increase those properties. Uh, obviously in the downside, you can expect that at one point you won't have that many new medical facilities that is required to produce marijuana. And um, the other thing that Innovative Party sees does to grow, as you can see, is they finance most of their uh, acquisition through more units. Every time you issue new units, this means that you also have to pay more dividend to everybody. So this could slow down the dividend growth rate going forward. But in the meantime, it's still quite appealing. 
when you look at the stock price right now, uh, we're almost at its peak point. Obviously, it was a much better play a couple of months ago. Uh, that was discussed actually at DSR, but uh, I think that we're not done growing in this industry. Uh, as you can see, in terms of revenue, the company is following um, a very nice skyrocket ramp going up in the sky which is pretty nice and I think that you're going to have several years in front of you with this kind of increase. Uh, we're not done yet. We can also expect more states to legalize marijuana, especially for medical care and this would give another, another jump for innovative properties. So this is why it is one of my favorite REITs right now. Now, moving on to apartment REITs, and you know, if you haven't looked at my Canadian video, I've discussed that a lot uh, last week. Uh, the apartment REITs are very interesting right now because they're still hurt by the market. And I'll explain you why, and this is one of the downside of a sex property group, as pretty much it is for any other um, apartment REITs. The thing is, REITs over, uh, the thing is apartment REITs, they offer most of the time, one year contract, right? You cannot find apartments that you're gonna rent for the next 10 years at a locked up price. So this increased volatility. And right now the market is looking to get more reassurance and more stability. Uh, when you're talking about one year rent, this is not jiving with what the market is looking for. The other problem is to make sure that they have enough uh, tenants and they keep their occupation rate very high. A lot of um, REITs will offer zero rate increase to keep their tenants or even sometimes lower their rent to acquire new tenants. So obviously short term perspective, revenue are in, and fund from operation is likely to go down a little bit. But even then, when you look at a company like SX, ticker ESS, dividend yield at 3 point almost 70% and most importantly dividend growing since 1994 so we're talking about a dividend aristocrat here in a very very interesting and stable environment which are apartments actually um, high quality apartments so we're looking at um, a company that focuses on offering uh, nice apartments similar to what I've discussed last week when you look at a recession and you look at the current pandemic, uh, a lot of professionals and people working in the tech industry will not feel the recession. Um, lots of them are millennials and they expect to um, enjoy life and experience and then they don't want to do anything about household chores uh, and, and taking care of the house. So they're pretty happy living in an apartment and sex success is actually based on the fact that they have all their properties in around tech hubs. So we're talking about California and Seattle. And the whole idea here, and the, one of the reasons why it's growing and it's doing so well, is because they have base their properties around companies that are thriving. And believe it or not, I'm pretty sure that the tech industry is going to do very well in the next 10 years. And therefore, California and Seattle will likely to push through. Um, it is also a downside when you think about it, because if there's anything happening to California, SX is going to have a problem. We know that there's a lot of wildfires around there. Will it affect the economy going long term? Will it affect the, uh, the rental space? Those are things that you have to consider. But in the meantime, we're looking at a company that is very well established, that knows their niche market, and they're not going to go spread all across the other states. They're just focusing on those to make sure that they understand the demand and that they meet it. So the growth vectors for SX is obviously a highest uh, growth, economic growth for Seattle, the city of Seattle and uh, California. So we're talking about strong demographic, great high paying jobs and a healthy economy. So all those things combined, to, uh, combined together may, makes uh, the rental apartments very attractive business for SX, especially when you know that not market so well and that you're well established like this. Now, in terms of dividend perspective, well, you know, first thing first, it's a dividend aristocrat. We're talking about 26 years of consecutive dividend increase. So this means that they went through the tech bubble and they survive. 
they went through the financial crisis and they survive and they are going through the pandemic and they will likely survive not even survive but actually they are still able to always reward you with an, a paycheck increase and this is probably one of the most important thing here and when you look at how the uh, adjusted fund from operation per share is growing versus the dividend uh, you can see that there's a lot of more money coming in than money coming out so then again another signs of a health the business model. Now, in terms of debts, because it's always very important to look at at the same time, but you can see that um, sex property is quite conservative debt to total assets is at 37 percent their interest coverage is almost at 500 percent um, as i mentioned earlier they have a low payout ratio also for the dividend so and they uh, are sitting on 1.6 billion dollars in liquidity as of q2 2020 so very well established comfortable not too in debt so they have the flexibility to move forward they can take a hit on their rents a temporary hit if they uh, try to renew uh, a lower rates or no increase for a couple of years this will not hurt the entire business it will be a slowdown the the, uh, the stock price is actually um the, the company is actually priced accordingly so as you can see it was trading over 300 bucks not too long ago now is your chance to get around 215. um so as a uh, as opposed to an innovative properties i think that sx is probably one of my favorite pick right now mostly because it has not recovered at all there's still a lot of concerns about the um the uh, the, the renting apartments uh, industry and at the same time you're talking about a company that went through and proved you throughout several recessions several economic crashes that they can keep up their promises and this is why it's one of my favorite now moving on to the last one which is very interesting because we're talking about stag industrial a yield of 4.5 and a monthly distribution also, you know me, I always look at the dividend growth. We're talking here of almost 10 years now of consecutive dividend growth. Uh, next year will be the 10th. So, uh, and I'm pretty confident you'll see that in a few slides you'll see that the uh, the dividend is quite safe. So you can count that STAG will show shortly 10 years of conservative dividend increase. So what is STAG? Well, we're talking about 457 facilities. Uh, they're all industrial REITs. A lot of them are, a lot of tenants are using uh, e-commerce. So we're talking about 40% of their business that is uh, linked either directly or indirectly to e-commerce, which which is very nice. Uh, pretty stable business model. We're talking about an average of five year terms for the, for the lease, which is kind of nice because it gives the company enough flexibility to manage their tenants. And what I really like about it is it's very strong um, diversification. First, geographic diversification. They're present across many, many states. Uh, their top 10 uh, states is about 50% of their business. So they're pretty, uh, the, I mean, top 10 city, not even states. So they're pretty much spread across, uh, across the US. And when you look at their top 10 tenants, it's not even 12% of their revenue. So which is very, very important. So tenants can come and go. They have multiple um, relationships even though Amazon is their largest tenants, it's only count for 2.5% of their business, which is not too much when you think about it. Uh, lots of servicing, a lot of industries, obviously, uh, top 10 is at 60%, which is a little bit high. Uh, but then again, um, we're, when you look at the list, you have pretty much all kind of businesses over there. Uh, you can still sleep well with stag industrials, well-managed REITs across the industrial. And sometimes what you'll see is that the those kind of of REITs will focus on a very specific angle or very specific type of tenants. In this case, you have all kind of tenants, all kind of industries, and all kind of cities. Uh, so pretty much if you're looking for something stable with a high yield, stack should be on your list for those reasons. Uh, when you look at the dividend safety, well, the orange line is the dividend growth. Uh, well, obviously, you're not talking about a super rocket company in terms of dividend growth. It's growing um, consistently 
but not by too much. We're talking about one cent per year for the past few years. Uh, so it's not incredible. But at the same time, what I like is when I look at the FFO per share over the past four years, it is growing in distance. So this means that the payout ratio is well under control and you can expect another increase next year. Now, in terms of uh, balance sheet, you can see that uh, management at Stag Industrial decided to go with a little bit of everything. So we're talking about uh, preferred equity, secured debts, um, and then a lot of common equity to finance the, uh, the the overall thing. They all go with fixed rate, so they know exactly how to calculate their things, and it's a lot easier to manage in terms of debts because they know whatever they have to pay, and then they can turn around and ask their tenants for escalator rates, and then they're just making more and more money across uh, their contracts. Uh, they obviously have well diversified their debt maturity. There is a big of a peak in 2023. Um, this should not be a problem when you think about it. The, uh, the current situation and the recession should be over by then. So we're talking about two years and a half from now. Um, I don't expect not. Uh, I don't expect any road bumps to come out over there. And the good thing is. We already know that the Fed is um, targeting low interest rate until 2023. So when it's about to renew these debts, it should not be a problem and it will not struggle them uh, and not choke them in terms of payments, which is kind of nice. Uh, looking at the uh, stock price now, uh, Stag has fully recovered. It was on our buy list a few months ago, um, but don't think that they're done yet. I expect them to continue to thrive, especially because they have already um, gone through the e-commerce route. They focus on having those kind of tenants. They have the experience now. They're well diversified. So I'm expecting to see that revenue trend keep going up. You're going to get a nice, slow dividend growth here. And the, FF, uh, the AFFO payout ratio right now is under 80%, which guarantees you another increase next year, um, which is kind of nice uh, because you have the both of perfect world with Stag. You have a company that, yes, is not underpriced right now. It's not like the deal of the century, but you have uh, relatively high yield with decent growth expectation. So you have the best of both worlds, especially if you're retired. It pays monthly. Um, the, the distribution is paid monthly. So then another reason to go for, for Stag Industrial. So if you're looking for a little bit more growth, go with SX. If not, you have um, innovative properties that is like all out growth right now on fire. SX is more undervalued, so it's a great pick. And then Stag that is bringing a little more stability into your retirement portfolio. So now it's your turn. I would like you to tell me which REIT is your favorite in the US side, for what reason. Uh, let me know if you want me to look at any other REITs at the same time. I'm kind of like building some lists of videos ideas and uh, I wanna come back next week with some great ideas. And in the meantime, I would like you to invite you to subscribe to my free newsletter and download our DSR Recession Proof Portfolio Workbook. It's like 35 pages straight to the point, lots of questions asked for you to work on your portfolio, understand what's happening. You know, we had a lot of volatility in the past few weeks uh, due to COVID, the elections is coming. So you wanna make sure that your portfolio is well prepared, well balanced, and that you will be able to go through the next recession like a champ. This is the book that will help you do it. You don't need to register for DSR to use it. You can actually do everything that's in the book for absolutely free. Uh, so I think it's gonna help you a lot manage your portfolio. Just go down in the comment section, tell me about your favorite read and subscribe in the link description for uh, to receive the ebook right away. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Give me a like button, uh, you, know, you know the drill. The more like we get, the better the channel is, the more people see these, those videos and the more inclined that I will want to make more videos in the future. So hope that you have enjoyed this one and until next video, stay invested.